Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, President Buhari to appoint more ministers into the federal cabinet as well as board members for agencies and parastatals. Former President Goodluck Jonathan demands one bill in Nara from Oli Sametu to appear as defense witness for him in the case of a 400 million Nara money laundering. Days after Channel Television's reports, which exposed the poor state of the nation's national library, Senate questions delay in the completion of the new facility. Again, Kenya opposition leader Raila Odinga vows to continue protest against last week's presidential rerun and convene a People's Assembly. And in business news tonight, World Bank lists Nigeria as one of the top 10 most improved economies as the country places 145th in global ease of doing business rankings. On sports news, former NPLFF champions Anugu Rangers appoint a new coach ahead of the new season. And from Abuja, informal workers take to the streets of Lagos to protest what they call harassment and extortion by officials of government agencies in the state. To begin with the president's decision to appoint more ministers into his cabinet and to make board appointments in line with recent demands from his party members, President Mamadou Buhari gave hint to the new appointments at the National Executive Council meeting of the ruling All Progressives Congress in Abuja, the nation's capital. He explains that the, to the gathering that his reason for running a trimmed cabinet is to avoid waste. Presently, the Federal Executive Council has 36 ministers, 14 of them serving as ministers of state, while the president himself doubles as the minister of petroleum. The next meeting is the APC's first meeting in several months. Governors and National Executive Council members of the All Progressives Congress arrive in the party headquarters in Abuja for a meeting. The arrival of the president and the vice president sets the tone for the meeting. But after a few minutes, the National Executive Council meeting went behind closed doors. After over two hours, the president takes his leave and the National Publicity Secretary of the party explains the outcome of the meeting. Mr. President has mentioned that um, the cabinet will be rejuvenated to bring fresh ideas. You can interpret that any way you want, but that was the exact statement of Mr. President that the cabinet will be rejuvenated to bring fresh ideas. He also said that members who are unhappy that uh, two years down the line they have not been appointed into positions, they assured that uh, that will be looked into very soon. And every single person in that hall today was very happy with the appointment of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, uh, Boss Mustafa. Beyond the cabinet reshuffle, the National Publicity Secretary applauds the vote of confidence passed on the president. The key motion that was moved was for to was to pass a vote of confidence on Mr. President generally. And that motion was moved after the Minister of Agriculture, Audu Ogbe, gave a report of his sector, and everybody was happy with the progress that has been made, especially when he announced that by 2018, Nigeria will have no need to import even a grain of rice. So everybody was happy with that, and a motion was moved that we should pass a vote of confidence on uh, Mr. President. Some governors also share their views on the process of selecting a presidential candidate for the party for the 2019 presidential election. We are very democratic. If Mr. President wants to run for election, he will, will follow all the process and uh, if he's the person, we will support him. But uh, uh, in, in APC, there's no position of candidates. The APC in 2015, in, in late 2014, held one of the most successful primaries in Lagos where it, has, it shows the importance of democratic competition to even strengthening both a party and the country. Although some prominent party members were absent at the meeting, the announcement of a cabinet reshuffle by President Buhari and the appointment of members into the boards of government agencies and corporations will no doubt ease the tension within the party. 
From all indications, President Mamadou Buhari is taking some extremely bold steps and acting quite quickly too on many of the complaints that have dominated public discussions and subjected his government to criticism. His decision to add more ministers to his cabinet is the outcome of one of the many criticisms that has trailed the government, especially from civil rights groups. Now it seems the president is under pressure to impress Nigerians or possibly right the wrongs of his government. Writing the wrongs of two years seems the best way to describe the moves by President Mohamed Buhari in recent times. This week alone, he appears unusually swift and reactionary to many of the criticisms trailing his government, particularly those affecting his much publicized fight against corruption and the delivery of his electoral promises. Obviously, there are many back-end work to do, starting from under his roof. His announcement of the sack of the former secretary to the government of the Federation, Babacher Lawal, and the NIA Director General had been long awaited. Many Nigerians had resorted to open criticism of the president, both on the social media and the traditional media. What we have seen in the last one week or two weeks ago between Kachiku and um, Bikantibaru, Probably I just said uh, tips of the iceberg. Yes, that's right. There are chief executives at the moment who have no boards in the past status. And you can, you can imagine what they can be doing without such boards. Comments like this have put the government on its toes. And it now seems the president may have to listen more to his critics who will not stop at pointing out his flaws, either for their personal political gains or the interest of all. The president's 36-man ministerial cabinet still tops the list of key areas of criticism that require his immediate action. He has been criticized for not appointing a senior minister for the petroleum ministry, a position which he personally occupies with the assistance of a minister of state. He has also received knocks for appointing Mr. Babatunde Fashola as a minister for three key ministries driving the economy, that is the Ministry of Works, Power and Housing. The president may have to prepare for decisions on what to accept and adopt for his government, especially now that his party seems ready to retrace its steps and walk the talk of the year 2015. Perhaps these actions will rekindle the hope of the masses yet again in a government they trusted to deliver the goods for them. One of the major issues that came out to today's meeting of the APC's National Executive Council is the president's announcement of his plan to reject the cabinet and appoint more members for boards of parasitals. To bring some perspective to the issue, I'm being joined on the News at 10 by legal practitioner Daniel Boala. He's in Abuja. You're welcome to the News at 10. What do you make of the decision by the president to expand his cabinet at this time? Well, uh, thank you for having me. A lot of people ask the question whether the decision to expand the cabinet is constitutional. And I've always, uh, I, I laughed at the, the, the contrary opinion. It is constitutional. And, uh, you know, what the president actually said was that some of the ministries that were compressed into one are the ones that are going to decompress. Take, for example, if you look at power, it is three in one. If you look at transport, it is also three in one. And there are other ministries that have uh, sim similar compression. So that is a good idea as far as APC as a party is concerned because it will bring in more APC members to fill in political posts. This is without prejudice to other uh, appointments like that of the boards and everything. But the president has to be careful to be sure that those he appoints into ministries, parastatus, or agencies of the government have to be competent and creative team players and people with ability to think on their feet. Because you cannot mortgage, for example, efficiency and reviving of the economy at the expense of rewarding the party. It is quite obvious that the meeting and the, some of the decisions of the president is geared towards appeasing the party members, which is not a problem to strategically position them against 2019. But the president has a contract with the nation called Nigeria. Some of us have asked the question, what happened to the ministries in existence but are redundant, that are ineffective and inefficient? 
what happened to the ministers and some of his appointees at the moment who are not effective and are not creative at all the president has not said he is going to sack ministers he has not said he's going to relieve ministers or appointees or position he merely said he's going to add to it and so when you add to inefficiency when you have inefficiency multiplied by two the resultant effect is going to be a bad one so the president is enjoined to critically look at efficient and competent people in the party to appoint them into the various posts well i, I see two issues uh, coming up here the one is the timing of the expansion of the cabinet and the second is whether uh, the new appointments will reflect federal character which has also be, been one of the criticisms facing this particular government right well for the principles of federal character i think it's constitutional and if you violate that i think there is actionable in law for the aggrieved um, you know, regions or whatever because the constitution says that the composition of the government of the federation must be carried out in such a way that the principles of federal character will be reflected so and i and i think that the president is careful about that especially because of the wake of his meeting with the southeastern people who have agitated for a long time that they've been let, left out in government even though that is debatable mm -hmm. we were told in the meeting he was able to advance an argument to them to understand that in fact out of the five southeastern states four of the five are substantive ministers while some of the northern states had just minister of state so i believe that the president will be sensitive and careful enough to reflect the principles of federal character in the appointment as for the timing i think it is strategic on his own part to look at one building on the momentum of the achievement he has mentioned in the meeting for instance and then looking at 2019 so that even if not for himself but for the party as a whole to 2019 the party will have to show that they have been affecting overall for them to be able to have a resounding success at the poll so i don't have a problem with the reshovelment my my major concern has been and it bears repeating that there are existing ministers and appointees that are not effective presidents should relieve them and they should be grateful to him that he has kept faith with them even though they have not been effective for example we can mention agriculture we can mention econ um, uh, finance when you look at extra ministerial department you can mention efcc you can mention custom these are these are names and ministries or departments that when you mention people are excited about the development there but aside from that and maybe one or two other ones which other ones can you boldly point out and say it is effective and most of them hide behind this fact that because they do not have budget or they do not have enough money but ministries that's why the quality of a minister must be one that is creative that is innovative and has the capacity to galvanize private participation so that that ministry can be expanded to improve on the economy the president will have to look at that daniel Bala, thank you so much for joining us on the news at 10 appreciate your thoughts tonight and before the president left for the National Executive Council meeting of his party, he met with the newly appointed secretary to the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, at the villa. Mustafa replaces Babacir Lawal, who was sacked by the president on Monday following corruption allegations. There are no details as to what the president discussed with Boss Mustafa as he's expected to resume work immediately. The new SGF is a lawyer with extensive experience in management, both in private and public sectors. He was a deputy national chairman of the defunct Action Congress of Nigeria, one of the parties that formed the ruling All Progressives Congress. Meanwhile, President Mamadou Buhari is hosting National Assembly leaders to a dinner at the presidential villa. Lawmakers from both chambers of the National Assembly were led to the villa by the Senate President, Dr. Bukola Saraki, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara. This is the latest gathering the President is attending in the last 48 hours as it comes after the National Executive Council meeting of the All Progressives Congress.